Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And again on the show, give a round of applause for our dear friend, Brent Raptor, a.k.a. Brent, a.k.a. Rachel. Hi. Still haven't decided on a name. Um, well, we're happy to roll with it. It lends me an air of mystery. Yeah, who, who are they? We don't know. I don't know, and I don't have pronouns either, so that means no one can talk about me behind my back. <laughs> Just, it's foolproof. It's- I, had somebody, I had somebody tell me on Twitter that when they're talking about me to their friends, they always call me this asshole. <laughs> um, which, yeah. Maybe it backfired a little there. Yeah, a little bit. All right, well, gosh, how are things? Uh, good. I am uh, officially passing college. I'm turning in my final uh, really? retrospective That's and amazing. comic on May 2nd, and I'm graduating on the 22nd. Congrats! Uh, wow, that's yeah. so cool. And uh, then I'll be destitute, I guess, because who's going to hire me? Welcome but... to my life. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Well, yeah, we are not proof that the college system works. So. Yeah, well, I mean, look at me. I'm I'm going to Hampshire, where I don't even have a GPA, <laughs> and I'm majoring in cartooning. So that's looking really great for me. All right. Well, hey, if it helps at all, my fiance it went to musical theater conservatory. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. And now he's got like a bunch of teaching jobs and he's doing quite well. I mean, he's almost 30 now, now mm. that he's actually got it all sort of worked out, but he got oh, well, there. <laughs> I mean, my girlfriend's older and she's studying neuroendocrinology. Oh, oh so you got to lock that down. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> well, cool. How about you, Alex? Yeah. What's going on in your world? Um, I had a job interview yesterday. Oh, yay. For a job that you sent me the link to. Oh, good. I'm glad that was helpful. And it went super duper well. And hopefully by next week, I'll be full-time employed. Oh, That's I'm awesome. so happy. Oh, God. I'm crossing my fingers as hard as possible. I I'm going to be so happy if I helped. Given how the interview went, I don't see it like not going my way, but you never know. Mm-hmm. Right. You don't, yeah. You don't want to, like, Jinx expect it. it and then, yeah. You can't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's my job advice. <laughs> Someone who's never had a job. <laughs> Well, oh gosh, that's so good. That's such a relief. Like, I'm going to just, like, wish and pray and do magic at you so that it'll happen. At at the interview, I was like, you know, a full-time job would only change everything in my life, so. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. What about you? I know know you've been busy. Yeah, big life. (laughs) things i'm getting married in literally a week Woo. So that's something uh yeah and that same weekend my great grandma's turning 100 years old wow so oh, that's that's how is- that's how i'm spending the day after getting married driving to my grandmother's house <laughs> do you have the little you know what hands and and the little just married sign i should get honestly i babies? might as well tack that on the list <laughs> I thought you said canes, and I'm like, oh. that would be useful yeah. for your great grandmama. <laughs> yes, <laughs> multiple yes. If, if if available. Well, yeah, you know, when you get a hundred, you start growing new arms. It's called yeah. twenty three. You, <laughs> <laughs> you need to reinforce the limbs that are already there by taping a cane to them. Mm. I'm I'm reminded of that freaky Joey Camo short story that you read for Halloween, Alex, yeah. <laughs> where the grandma turns into a monster when she turns a hundred. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh. So beware, beware. <laughs> oh, shit, that might happen. Uh, oh, I'm God, so glad no. I'm not going to live that long. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to say, the more significant and exciting news, even than either of those, what? is what? that tomorrow I'm seeing Hamilton. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Rap air horn. <laughs> I really need like an I'm air horn. Alexander app or Hamilton. I, I do the. I try to do an air horn sound, and nobody in real life like knows what I'm doing. 
<laughs> I knew someone. Pew, 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 pew. I knew someone who would only make air horn sounds with their mouth, <laughs> like constantly, <laughs> just drop them in conversation. That's how they said they were happy. <laughs> The way you worded that for a moment made me think that they refused to use a real air horn at any time and just I mean, would only make air horn sounds with their mouth. Did. That's a good hill to die on. If like, I'll be oh, honest. and especially like if they actually had an air horn and they would just like pretend they're pushing yeah, it, but then make the vocalization. <laughs> State of the art. Oh man, in my office we have um, an air horn sitting on someone's desk at, for like an emergency situation. That's the worst place because to have an air horn, yeah, it's out. It is. It's really bad. That's like a gun in the first act. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was air horn. Well, because I work in an industrial sh- workshop, and so like serious emergencies are like a possibility and so we have the most responsible in the off person in the office with an air horn on her desk and like <laughs> dudes from the shop are just always coming up like oh an air horn and she's like do not <laughs> do not touch it god oh my ADHD <laughs> could not handle that that is a literal <laughs> yeah. plot to the episode of the office is it <laughs> i see a horn i gotta honk it exactly honk. gotta honk it it's the big red button oh, yeah. situation oh, right really? it 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 is the audio equivalent of a big red button <laughs> <laughs> and it is a button too mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. oh brother well this is this is yeah we're all very well warmed up here in yeah. our conversation well, we got warmed up trying- before but then we had technical difficulties so we cold it down and now we're warming up. We're, we're really we're like professional up athletes, again. and we went through like our ice bath, and now we're like doing our warm up. We've got our icy yeah. hot on. Mm-hmm. Doing our stretches. I'm, I don't I'm know. I'm in the whirlpool. <laughs> right, whirlpool. Is that something athlete, athletics do? I don't know. I used I up all my, my references I, in that last 30 seconds. I got my medicine ball. <laughs> and that yeah. thing that shakes you around with the belt. Yeah, those things that they totally work and stuff. Yeah, there's actually a place uh, in downtown Vancouver, Alex, uh-huh. that like has those things. It's like a shake you around <laughs> boutique. I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't work. Okay. Sounds like a sex if, that's, if that's not the name of it, we are opening the shake you around <laughs> boutique tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know what it's called. I don't know what that process is. So things you can sell there, right? Shake weights <laughs> and um, uh, shake and, and bake. Hand jobs. Oh uh, my goodness! <laughs> you know, we've gone there. Well, yeah. Yep. Within the first ten minutes of the episode. Well, that's because of. That's All right. I'm here. I've, I've, I don't know if I've cursed this podcast, but I've definitely cussed it. <laughs> I think it's like a dark <laughs> blessing, if anything. Oh, dark blessing. <laughs> that's my. That's my drag name. Yes. <sighs> yes, yeah, Brent Raptor, the dark blessing upon my podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's high. Uh, this is totally off topic of everything. <laughs> our podcast really has to do with but there's a <laughs> there's a new <laughs> like meme that. on gay twitter um, oh the, the first twitter. episode of season 10 of rupaul's drag race normally the first drag queen to go home is like shamed and nobody ever talks about them but this one as she was leaving the stage she just kept saying her name in this like super eerie way and now it's like a total oh, yeah. meme miss oh, vangie yeah miss vangie and she's like hexing them. Yes, exactly. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. That's the most That's disconcerting thing exactly, that you possibly exactly. could have done. And then next episode, saying your own name. <laughs> in the next episode, they showed um, Michelle Visage, RuPaul's best friend and co-judge, whispering that to RuPaul as she was leaving, <laughs> <laughs> and Ru was just trying not to cackle, and it's so funny. <laughs> Uh, my favorite RuPaul meme right now is uh, she, she was like um, saying that she was supporting uh, transgender women uh-huh. and instead of she, she googled trans flag but I think she messed up and said trains flag <laughs> so she found this like minimalist kind of uh, like color field art called train landscape <laughs> and it's like this green and yellow affair <laughs> The trains flag and said, "I don't know. It's very good because that's that's the most she could have fucked it up." I love it though. 
I, it I, in some strange be, way, I feel it's appropriate. It was supposed to be an apology, which is the best part <laughs> yeah, about mm-hmm. it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, anyway. Golly. <sighs> yes. So the real question on everyone's lips is, how's the webcomic going? Um, I don't know. You should stop reading people's lips. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it's it's great. I've got a buffer for about two months. Um, oh, good. It's starting, to seem, gotta be. it's starting to seem like not a lot because when the buffer runs <laughs> out, it's exactly the day I'll be graduating. Oh. <laughs> oh. So I got to keep plugging along at the same pace. But I'm currently drawing an arc that I'm very excited about. It's a flashback. Uh, and again, you won't be seeing it for two more months. So but that's all I'm going to say about it. And a little sneaky peek, though. That's some, exciting. Some mystery. Well, you guys are going to... I have one one-off comic after uh, the chapter that ended um, on Friday. Mm-hmm. And uh, after that, I'm launching into a new arc. And it's going to be really funny. And I'm excited about it. Yay! I'm excited. Yeah. I, say, I say arc as if there's, like, a narrative. It's just, like, a riff on, like... You know, like, Calvin and Hobbes would, like, pick a subject for the week. and. Yeah. Then, you have a bunch of jokes about that. Well, I mean, after reading and, and seeing what you already have up, I, I totally understand what you're talking about. Like, there's a couple that are yeah. just one or two panels, and then there's a couple that are a little longer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, of course, was going to and knew I was going to, but, like, I, I'm just loving it so far. Yeah, Man, have it's, you mentioned it's, the name of it yet? I don't think we have. <laughs> well, it's I guess nameless, not. It's a, it's, um, just like, like you, me. it has like no me. name. <laughs> No, the man of mystery. Miriam Beach. Check it out. I Miriam Beach comic. Name. I should change my name to Miriam Beach. Oh, that's a good name. like a person's name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? That can be Shep's drag name. That would be Oh perfect. my god. <laughs> that's yeah. adorable. Yes. No. Miriam Beach comic. It's radical. It's shaking up the world. Check it, it really- out. I cannot stress how little it's shaking up the world. That's actually my intention with it is to make like originally the the byline for it, like the tagline was going to be uh, an unimportant web comic because I see a lot of people saying like um, like people are always wanting like LGBT representation in all my characters. Uh, the main characters are men who love men, and I don't think there's a single straight character uh, mm-hmm. yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> And the Charlie Schwartz, one of the protagonists, is is a transgender man. But I don't want that to be the focus. Um, I don't. Like, I don't want something... anyone. I don't want anyone thinking I have something important to say, especially if I mess up. Um, so I'm writing outside of my experience. So I just want to like stress that I'm not going to grapple with important issues. And in fact, I'm only going to like engage with. Um, the most trivial shit I can think well, of. I think it. I gotta say, I, I, there's something radical about that, though. The idea of just like, yeah, this is just normal. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know. When I think, yeah, also, I don't want to be called radical. It also allows <laughs> readers, if if they feel they need to, they can sort of fill in the gaps. Yeah, and you know what? I have I've seen that with some people. I mean, not to brag, but people have been uh, really happy about the bossy body, the bossy positivity of it. Um, <laughs> Uh, they've, uh, I've had people come to me and say, like, uh, Charlie made me feel better about, like, my, you know, Ashkenazi Jewish features and my weight. Mm -hmm. Uh, someone said, like, I have a physique like Mason and he looks really cute. (laughs) So I'm glad I can look like that. Yeah. Which makes me feel really good. Yeah. Is it fair to say this may be the queer Seinfeld? (laughs) Sorry. I couldn't even get through that. (laughs) That that would be the best for it. I think. <laughs> yeah, Christ. it's a gay show about nothing. <laughs> Larry, created by Larry David. <laughs> it really is. It's a web comic about nothing, and I would say it is maybe the opposite of trailblazing or groundbreaking because it is very much a return to the like mid aughts gamers on a couch comic. But um, you're making room for queer people in it, and that's new. Like, I and I don't mean to like put you in a place that makes you uncomfortable, but I, yeah. I mean there is something really um, refreshing about that. At very yeah, least, yeah. I guess. 
I just, um, it would probably be better if it was written by an actual, like, uh, queer man. Um, I am non-binary, but mm. I do not have the experience of, say, uh, a trans man or a, a black queer man like Shep is. Um, so I, I worry a lot about getting it well, right. Well, I think, um, um, not to, like, make you worry more, but I think the fact that you do worry yeah. is a clear sign that you that it's important and that... You want yeah. to treat it and with as I, much respect as you. Can. Yeah, yeah, and I've gotten I've gotten better at like not doubling down and being defensive. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I do I do take criticisms to heart a lot. Like I take everything too personally, oh. but well, yeah, but that's uh that's only like a problem when it's something really frivolous. Yeah, uh, I gotta say, like, and I and I'm not gonna call anyone out right now, but there are some. There's there's some internet uh, creatory type people who recently I've seen that I, I otherwise quite admire who've gotten really sort of gross and defensive about people yeah. like attacking them personally and it's just such a bad look like it's one thing yeah. to like be like oh no like w- like you know this is you know maybe it is hurtful and you don't want to hear it but like to like go out and be like yeah. shitty about it is a bad what? bad look. I'll say it's also a bad look to just um, go to someone randomly and, like, start roasting yeah. them. I've had sure. people act like I'm their friend because they've been following me for a while mm-hmm. and acting like we're at the level where they can, like, playfully rib me. That's such a um, mistake. It's like, you know, just be nice on the internet. You don't actually know these people. Yeah. Like, you don't have yeah. that rapport. <laughs> well, things have been better since I started assuming good faith, but... Mm-hmm. Honestly, I've had complete strangers just um, say kind of rude things to me. Yeah, um, no, that's so misguided and inappropriate. I know from, from, like you're yeah. not for myself. I I've really been trying to challenge myself to because I, I like to respond to people's tweets with like a little joke. It's never usually like about them as a person, but I, I'm just really trying mm-hmm. to like. Does the world need this joke to exist, or is it just for yes, me? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I've been trying to do. Um, I've been trying to filter myself a little more. I mean, you look at my Twitter and you're like, this person is not filtering. <laughs> but uh, this is actually why I closed down uh, the Twitter account that I had for six years that I made when I was a sophomore in high school. Because you look at that and it is just brain vomit. Mm. Um, it is just, I upchucks all my thoughts all over the place. And um that's why I just like shut it down. I needed a fresh start because mm-hmm. the difference between sophomore year of high school and senior year yeah, of college. No, I totally get that. <laughs> it, it was very, it's a very vast personal and artistic. Oh, nice. My, my computer has 90, 69% charge. <laughs> yeah, Although nice. 90, 96 could be the sex number. Oh wait, no, it couldn't. <laughs> no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what sex is. Um, that's barely a joke. I would joke. say that 96 um, is like <laughs> negative or opposite spooning, maybe. Back to back, it like is. a restful it's night's like sleep. When, <laughs> yeah, it's like when you're on a small bed and you have to conserve space. <laughs> you know, I saw a picture of Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, and Taika Waititi doing that. Oh. So- <laughs> Post that I in the it. show notes. It was I the cutest. Can I have that with Hideo Kojima, Mads Mikkelsen, and Guillermo oh. del Toro? Oh my god, it's the only way to make it better. They could, they could sleep on Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> yeah, like a big Totoro. He's a sweet bed. He's a bed of a man. <laughs> Did you know that the little girl uh, who played young yeah. Mako called him Totoro-san? Yeah. I know, that's what I was thinking of when I said yeah, that. It's he's so a big cute. Totoro man, and they can snuggle up on his belly. Yeah. Uh, it's the sweetest. That's so sweet. <laughs> He's a he's a Snorlax yeah. <laughs> with with like facial hair. <laughs> I love those boys. I do. Oh, Snorlax with facial hair is that describes half of my characters that I draw. <laughs> yeah, it does. Which is why I think maybe you should have Guillermo do like a little guest spot or something. <laughs> yeah, he'd love that. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, The Shape of Water was a movie made for Charlie. <laughs> it's a movie made he's, for me. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I saw somebody somebody on Twitter, um, a queer poet, post a picture of themselves driving in a car, riding in a car with a giant box of goldfish and just labeled the shape of water. <laughs> Holy Moses. I love goldfish crackers. <laughs> so I can relate to that very much. Yeah. 
But we were talking about an entirely different thing. Oh boy. Um, I can, I can, <laughs> yeah. I can. I have a, a three notes written down. I can bring up one of them. <laughs> I would love to hear your notes, sir. Fantastic. Um, I, I will say, like, I, uh, the moment I really fell in love with Miriam Beach was uh, Shep in the grocery store. Yes. Okay. That's that's. I think when the comic really like turned around, like the first few pages were kind of meh. Um, that was really. I drew that way back in October, and you can see that my art has really progressed since then. That's one thing that I find really frustrating mm-hmm. is that, like, I look at something and I'm like, I could draw way better now. Like, if I redrew the chapter where they're in the club that I just finished mm-hmm. uh, right now, it would look so much better. It's the so it's like lagging months behind. As a web comic yeah. artist, I mean, any kind well, of artist. Also, but the issue of having a big lead time is if you make a mistake. And somebody says, like, well, you should maybe change this aspect of your comic. It would take months to roll out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it would still be the same shit uh, until you're able to fix it. Um, yeah, that's I, I don't expect people to be patient. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, fuck their patience. Yeah. You know? Try to be patient yeah, with yourself. But if, it's something, if it's something important, I don't want to, like, wait. Yeah. Sure. Uh, but, but okay. yeah. I mean, you can but only we were talking about. We were talking about Shep in the grocery store. Yeah, so I, I just I just love that moment because it's like it's such a sincere moment where it's not like because I feel like because as somebody that works at a retail store, like sure you might go above and beyond if you're off the clock or whatever, but you're still gonna be grumpy about it. Whereas I didn't notice any sort of like he just was like ready. Mm-hmm. He wasn't even off the clock. He just didn't like work yeah. there. He yeah, I know, I know exactly, shirts. exactly. Which is like a yeah. normal person would just be like. Oh, I don't work here. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Instead but of like, he decided oh, let me help to, you because I love this place. He pulled no. He pulled a good-natured prank, yeah. you know, lying about <laughs> the products and saying they had like gluten-free bread. He's a married made prankster. Of Barnwood. Uh, I would like to uh, okay. shout out to uh, that comic specifically. Owes a lot to Chris Fleming, a comedian who is on YouTube and who did the series Gail. Yeah, which I is, was going to bring up yeah. your uh, secondary or thirty tertiary Twitter. Yeah, uh, because I've really been obsessed with it, and it really got me back into Chris Fleming. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but that entire thing is, first of all, the running joke in Gale. Uh, Gale is about like um, it's basically a satire of uh, waspy, high class uh, New England moms, mm-hmm. uh, where Chris Fleming plays the eponymous character, and one of the running jokes is. Uh, Gail's contempt for the whimsy of Trader Joe's. Um, <laughs> and so that's basically what I was going for with the setting. I changed it to Crunchies because I didn't want to like Google Trader Joe's and research it. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's just better to not use the real brands and all yeah. that. Although I do that all the time. Like I have them like dropping the name of like Pepto Bismol yeah, yeah. and shit. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah I don't um, it's different. That's only because I, I could do a really good, uh, I could be a great brand ambassador for Pepto Bismol. Well, also, I, Pepto Bismol. I literally. Is- yeah, I look at the, I look, I'm looking right at this Pez dispenser with Twilight Sparkle's head on it. Uh, that is where I, I pop my uh, Pepto-Bismol tablets from. Oh <laughs> That's adorable. Uh, I need one, but for Tums. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, but anyway, uh, another way in which is owes to Chris Fleming is that there's an episode where Gail uh, gives a phony college tour. um, And she says, they ask her stuff like, what is the professor to student ratio? And she just says zero to one. (laughs) And she talks about how like, every freshman gets a puddle to sleep in. And instead of, instead of like a dining hall, they have a coleslaw mountain. (laughs) But what drew me to this school was the mandatory group showers with locals. Um, (laughs) So that's exactly like yeah. I was just doing the same thing with Shep. Uh, I really like the the ripping that Chris Fleming does. Something interesting about Gale is that uh, Chris edits them and he includes uh, multiple takes of the same line, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. which is really it's an interesting thing. Um, yeah, that's cute. And, I, I got to say yeah. one thing that I uh, I really appreciate about uh, what you're doing with Miriam Beach is the sort of kindness of it you know like so much comedy out there is unkind 
And that's exactly, and I, yeah, that's my mission statement. Uh, yeah, and it, it just bothers me. Like, my favorite comedies are the ones about people who love each other. Like, that's like Bob's Burgers. Like, Bob's Burgers. like uh, did you ever watch any Raising Hope? No. It's this really sweet little sitcom. I think we may have actually talked about it when we discussed sitcoms before. It's the one about the dude think, who, like, accidentally yeah, has a child with a murderer. Uh, yeah. But it's just about this weird, dumb family who loves each other. And, like, yeah, the comedy I mean, comes out of, like, misun- like not even really misunderstandings, just, like, people sort of, with the best of intentions, yeah. screwing up. Exactly. And that's, that's, you know, that's where it comes from in Bob's Burgers, too. Yeah. You can tell, like, they don't, they're sometimes at odds, but you can tell it's, it's you know, the arguments of a family that loves one another. Yeah, the, uh, the joke is never, like, putting somebody down. They used to punch down a lot more in the first season, but they actually, they grew the beard the second season. Yeah, they really, I, agree. Uh, I agree, I agree. Yeah, I really stopped doing that. Uh, so I would if if you haven't seen Bob's Burgers, anybody listening, um, see Bob's Burgers. You really just start at season two. Never yeah. watch don't the even first episode. <laughs> no, first don't watch don't the work. like eighth episode. There's like you know how every show has like a one trans misogynistic yeah. mm-hmm. episode. Mm-hmm. They have one in the first season. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, there's always one. I I really appreciate how like Tina could have so easily been a Meg Griffin. And she's just yeah, but they love her. They love her. Like she's this weird, awkward teenage girl, and they mm-hmm. love her. And she's okay with who she is. Yeah, and Jean is uh, very obviously has undiagnosed ADHD. <laughs> it loves to hog the limelight, says inappropriate stuff. You know, makes fart sounds all the time. I, I, I you can tell I identify with him the most. But <laughs> uh, really, all that the only criticism Bob gives him is just saying Jean. And kind of yeah. that disappointed tone. <laughs> uh, um, and well. Linda clearly, yeah, Linda clearly just loves Jean's energy and enthusiasm. Yeah, because they're almost at the same level. Linda loves yeah, they are. Thing. That's what I like about her. <laughs> She's too. just like, oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think my, f- I've been working on my Linda impression. My favorite oh. thing about her is her love for raccoons. Yes. Ah, little king He's trash mouse. Yeah. We just got married. <laughs> uh, I have a really good impression of Gail, not Chris Fleming Gail, but uh, the sister played by Megan Mullally. Oh, yeah. This is the only impression I can do, so I love to trot it out. Guess who's on new bed? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Like, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, I think Miriam Beach owes a lot to Bob's Burgers. In fact, I, I, I'm i patterning it after Bob's Burgers. I like something I really like about Bob's Burgers is um, when series go on for a long time, they are in their eighth season, I believe. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when series go on for a long time, sometimes they just introduce new characters that only like serve a purpose in one episode <laughs> and then they just go away. Something with Bob's Burgers is they could do that, but they keep bringing back old characters mm-hmm. and it, making the characters richer and i think that's really interesting and that's something i want to do with miriam beach is to make it feel populated uh yeah one of my favorite sort of uh tertiary characters on bob's burgers is oh god now i can't even think of his name he's the guy who owns the building he's played by kevin klein uh calvin calvin fish Fish Oder, yes i love him i love uh kevin klein like he's so damn funny well what I love about Bob's Burgers is this really fascinating thing where I think they have a master list somewhere of all the students' names in Wagstaff. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a school they go to. They also have, like, a recurring roster of teachers. Like, I could name them all, and they all have personalities. Like, Miss Schnur is the distractible secretary. Miss Selbo is an enthusiastic, like, administrative assistant. I think my favorite um, is the librarian. Oh, Mr. Ambrose, played by Billy Eichner. Yeah. He's so great. Um, uh, yeah, he's... Yeah, uh, and he comes back as, like, a cheerleading uh, guy. Oh, my goodness. And, That's amazing. Yeah. Like, and they also brought back uh, Keegan-Michael Key's character from that episode. Oh. Uh, he's in Debate Team, uh, which I just like that they reuse characters, and you hear the same names again, like Lenny Stefano, Peter Pescadero... Um, yeah, these are people who live in a city. Like, they live in a town together, yeah. and they run into one another. So it's like, exactly, and that's what I want Miriam Beach to be, but I have a very small cast right now. Oh, you'll get there. Uh, but I have, 
I have named uh, the background characters that you see, some of them. Like, the woman in the comic with the chocolate lab is named Lottie. Uh, the dad in the first chapter uh, is named Terrence, and his daughter's named Roma. It's short for Romero, because he likes zombie films. Ah, that's so uh, good! And she, she looks yeah. like the baby from home movies. From home movies, which is another Lauren Bouchard show, like Bob's Burgers, uh, co-created by Brendan Small. Brendan Small is so and funny. I think, yeah, I really like the improvised dialogue, and Something that I try to do with Miriam Beach, and I don't know if it's successful, is make it feel like it's improvised, um, which is very odd because a comic you spend, mm-hmm. like, days on. Yeah. So you really have to tie down the dialogue. So- um, and it's neither a collaborative nor extemporaneous process, <laughs> but somehow I have to make it seem like that because I'd rather erase my role as author um, and be more like a documentarian. I, I, you know, on that note, I had a question sort of, I, I've, I'm always so curious, especially when it comes to people who do comics, what your sort of process mm-hmm. is for creating a comic. Um, usually, uh, ideas will come to me when I'm taking a walk or when I see something like the comic where they're looking at a moon and saying about how it looks like a coin Mm -hmm. was inspired by a time I looked at the moon and thought it looked like a coin. (laughs) And, uh, you know, I, I will just get ideas for scripts when I go walking because I don't know, that makes me, uh, that helps me think. Um, and I... I mean, I usually have an idea for, like, what faces they'll make and what the panel layout will be. Mm -hmm. Um, So do you start with sketches? Do you start with a script? Uh, I start with a script. um, And then I do uh, some roughs just to lay out the comic uh, and to, like, figure out blocking, you know, where the characters will be. And then um, my process is pretty diffuse. I know people who have like a very regimented process, like first I do the lines, then I do the colors, then I letter it. But I kind of do things like I'll do the steps kind of out of order or like I'll finish one panel before I finish the rest. Uh, I also have, um, I'm less of a sprinter. Like I can't, uh, sometimes I hyper focus, but I can't as a rule usually focus on the same thing for three hours. So what I tend to do is I kind of graze in that, like, I'll draw one line and then wait, like, five <laughs> minutes and then draw another. But at the end of the day, it's finished. Yeah. Uh, I just worked on it very slowly. And the problem is, like, when I get a full-time job, I'll have to change the way I uh-huh. work, which I'm very nervous about. Um, yeah, it is, it is very it, hard to, <laughs> to keep up making things. It requires a lot of, it requires a, a lot of unstructured time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm, I'm very nervous about that. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that um, writing it is usually a pretty easy process for me. Um, so I do have uh, problems with writing characters that I don't know as well. Sure. Um, like I know <sighs> Miriam Beach has a huge lack of women. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I only have one recurring uh, female character. Louie. Um, Louie, yeah. Um, and... Uh, she doesn't get to talk a lot yet, so I'm trying to think of more stories for her, but I don't know a whole lot about her yet. Yeah. Um, the issue is, like, I have trouble coming up with a unique voice for a character, and that's why I tend to, like, fall back on, like, AUs um, yeah. and stuff like that. Because uh, I would, full disclosure, uh, Miriam Beach started as, like, um, a mundane version of the McElroy brothers' uh, The Adventure Zone. Um, and people are always like saying, oh, they look like Justin and Travis. And I'm like, I know what they look like. <laughs> like I drew them. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But I worry that people will think it's a rip off. And sometimes I think maybe I am ripping them off and I worry about that. I think that. it yeah. definitely feels more like an homage, if anything. Yeah. Um, and, and I, and when you mentioned the dialogue, it definitely almost, it, it has that same sort of, like you said, that, um, improv sort of feel that you really get from the McElroys. Yeah. Well, it's also like I, just the whole sense of humor, the kind of easy comedic chemistry yeah. that comes from people who spend a lot of time together, who grew up together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's part of why I like the, also Bob's Burgers and home movies were heavily improvised. So, yeah, that's uh, definitely I get it from the McElroys. Stylistically. Yeah. The same popular. sensibilities. Yeah, the, that, that sort of improvisational yeah. comedy is, is really coming up in a really big way right now like that's Mm -hmm. that's extremely uh well liked at the moment yeah but you know i I mean and i know that 
as an artist, you've heard this a thousand times before, but like, there's not any such thing as being original. So like, yeah, I know, but I, 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 as somebody who's very familiar with the McElroy family of products and who's now (laughs) becoming very familiar with your work, like I definitely feel that they're distinct. Like, yes, there is a certain sort of flavor, uh, a a certain sort of influence upon you. That's inevitable because you're a big fan of their work and you, Yeah, although weirdly, I haven't listened to the Bim Bam in months and I stopped listening to the Adventure Zone a while ago. (laughs) <laughs> well, uh, Adventure but, Zone Amnesty Season 2 is about to start, and I'm really looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I know uh, Charlie looks a lot like Justin, and I know Mason looks a lot like Travis, so nobody has to say it anymore. I know who they look like. And you, you wear your influences on your sleeve, which is like nobody can like you know get at you for it, because you're like, yeah, I know. That's exactly where it yeah. comes from. Yeah. But I do feel weird about, like, monetizing it, because what if it is, you know, a ripoff? Well, Um, my two cents is that you've got nothing to worry about. Okay. That's, you know, I needed that validation. (laughs) I I was fishing for that because I'm just sick. Every time I post a new comic, someone's like, am I the only one who thinks they look like the McElroys? And I'm like, no, you are not. These are just Um, people who think that they're clever. They want to say something. mm -hmm. Like... Well, yeah. (laughs) Just... You know, I shouldn't be, you know, uh, that mad about it. You know, people are going to respond to my art the way they respond about it. To and it. I just, I think uh, that and like, as it goes on and as you write more and as you discover these characters it, on your own, yeah. it, it'll just grow more and more distinct. Like, you've yeah, got I that hope sense so. of humor, that similar sense of humor to them because that's just what you're yeah. into. But it's, it's, you know, it's yeah. still very you, I think. Well, that's good. That's that's nice to hear. Okay. Um, I had trouble finding my own voice for a very long time, and I found that I was really good at capturing like an, another person's voice. Mm-hmm. Like I can really easily shift into a, a, a different gear and write like spec scripts. And so, Miriam Beach, uh, it because it started as an AU, I already had kind of the voices for the characters, and they were able to change organically into their own thing. And I was able to like you know, figure out, it was a good jumping off point is what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you're using a skill that you have naturally and yeah. sort of working with it and honing it and using it to your advantage. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I'm probably making it out to be a bigger deal than it is. It is a big deal. Like you, you're making something like, no, awesome. I mean, I'm, <laughs> that's not what I mean. I mean, I'm oh. probably making the similarities out to be a bigger deal. You know? Yeah, and it's uh, natural to have insecurities about things like that. Oh, for sure. I mean, I have, you know, Insecurity City, hello. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is that the neighboring town to Miriam Beach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can be. <laughs> Actually, I think that's Miriam Beach's, like, nickname. You know, how, like, oh, you Beehive <laughs> State. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Port- Insecurity City. Yeah, Portland is the Rose that's City, right. and <laughs> Miriam Beach is in Security <laughs> That's city. what they renamed the closed down Circuit City that they retrofitted into a nightclub for <laughs> introverts. <laughs> security City. Um, thank you. Everyone's just sitting around the edges of the room. Yeah, it's, it sounds like something Mason would come up with. Waiting. The thing is, he's an extrovert, but he has anxiety. Yeah, it takes <laughs> all kinds. <laughs> it does, yeah. That's the, that should be the new tagline of Miriam Beach. <laughs> Takes all kinds, I guess. <laughs> Takes all kinds. <laughs> that's cute. So, obviously, you've got a lot of sort of sitcom influence. I mean, you know, with Bob's yeah. Burgers and what all. Uh, yeah. Any other, uh, you know, sort of influences that you think are you know significant to what you've what you've done so far? Maybe yeah, like actually, color palette or style okay. wise or something. Well, I don't want to pin anyone. Uh, you know, I don't want to make anyone responsible for my use of color because that's still kind of a work in progress. <laughs> um, some of the better color palettes come from well, the one where they're talking about the moon and coins. Uh, I directly reference from a screenshot of The Simpsons House at Night because they have the mm-hmm. best night palettes. No, they do. Uh, my better, I have. You know, I've had some pretty sucky color palettes. I'm still learning. But I think one of my better ones come from probably Steven Universe, mm-hmm. which, I mean, say what you will about it. 
I haven't seen it in a while, but it always has the best like minimalistic backgrounds. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I really like the style of backgrounds that like El Machalka and uh, et al. do. So that's usually where I get my color palettes. I also, I'm working on a page now with like some gorgeous bokeh. I don't know how to pronounce that, B-O-K-E. I think H, that's, like a, that's how a I pronounce it, bokeh. but I don't know if I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> some gorgeous Boca Raton, a fine bouquet. Um, and it's directly inspired by the episode with Stevani in it. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, well, it helps that the town in Steven Universe is partially based on Rehoboth, which is also what Miriam Beach is based on. Mm -hmm. uh, that is... I mean, also, I mean, my work probably owes a little bit to Rebecca Sugar because she has that kind of airy, loose line work. Mm -hmm. uh, for a while, I was, like, fighting that look because I thought it didn't look polished enough. But I had a professor who was like, what's wrong with it? Mm -hmm. So I decided to, you know, kind of own that. Uh, I fought back, but I think it was a really great decision to make because I don't think my art looks like most people's. And I should really, you know, lean in to kind of the rough wiggly effect yeah I, I, well and i think embracing your art or your own style is is it's hard to do but it's really you know yeah what separates you like i know that in the times that i've tried visual art i've like always felt so unsuccessful because i'm trying to do something that maybe my hand can't do mm -hmm. so but i i like i get like the style is just so it's a really hard you know part to tackle yeah, I mean, finding your style and finding your voice, both very hard things that I've grappled with, but I'm really happy with my, where my style is at now. Uh, it also, um, it's, it's, it used to look a lot more Steven University, mm -hmm. but now it looks, uh, there's a little bit of Jamie Hewlett in there because this summer, <laughs> this summer I was briefly obsessed with uh, the band Gorillaz mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of Jamie Hewlett's style, which I really like got in my art and I think it looks really good now I think it it adds a little bit of an edge it makes the art look a little pointier yeah <laughs> everything I used to draw was rounded and now I have like a, a healthy balance um but yeah definitely uh, following you know following your work for the the time that I have like I I've definitely seen you sort of go through those changes in those yeah. shifts and and yeah i i definitely agree you know when you were in your jamie hewlett phase yeah it definitely got a lot more yeah. angular and uh a little bit more um sort of rendered i think you know a little bit more detail uh, and and then you know since at once you sort of <laughs> maybe worked through that phase a little bit then you yeah. pulled it back a bit and sort of found a good middle ground yeah. uh and and yeah well see that's that's my issue is because, you know, um, I'm going to be talking about my ADHD a lot on this show because, I mean, all my all my main characters, Shep, uh, Charlie and Mason, they all have ADD. Uh, and it's been a pretty important part of, of my work because Adventure Zone started as a phase just like my Gorillas phase. Mm -hmm. um, and I constantly, like, have a new interest and it's something I throw myself into all the time. And this time I decided to leverage my special interest for my characters mm -hmm. And really just run with that. So now that's all I talk about. <laughs> nice. So um, I had a thought and it flew out of my brain. So that's all right. I'm so no, sorry. it's not. You don't have to be. It's, it's a me thing. <laughs> um, I can bring up another one of my favorite uh, pages. Yeah. What's up? Oh, thank you. Um, the, the Let's Draw page. Yeah. The, the collaboration. Oh, that was so exciting. That was a collaboration between me and my mother. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, whom uh, Shep's character is very, very loosely based on her, just in terms of the interactions he has with his younger friends. Mm -hmm. um, because me and my mom have always been kind of uh, friends. And um, the way we kind of talk and joke with each other is very much like Shep and Charlie's relationship. Um, and uh, I definitely wanted her to be like, uh, Shep's a ghost artist mm -hmm. because her style is similar enough to mine that it, it looks like contiguous yeah, yeah. with the strip. It, it assimilates very well, but it's also um, very like, I don't know, it just seems perfect for Shep and now she's uh, gotten back into art. She used to draw a lot when she was a kid, but now she's getting back into art and she's starting painting, so I'm really oh, wow. excited to maybe have her have her do something again because part of uh, Shep's character is he really likes painting. Um, 
and uh, like he likes David Hockney, he likes um, Basquiat, and uh, I'm really excited to to maybe have my mom do some art for him again, some guest art. Uh, I would love to go through the process of it because it was really yeah, uh, interesting do. To, to do that. So uh, uh, it's a it's a page where Charlie um, he he is kind of like a cat in that he doesn't really look like he has bones, um, and so I drew him lounging on the couch and like well my mom drew him lounging on the couch in very like elaborate and uncomfortable looking poses, um, and just kind of oozing all over. So. Uh, what I did actually, that's, that's something that I've been known for is that I can't sit on a chair normally. In fact, right mm-hmm. now my legs are folded under me. Um, and, uh, that's something that, that applies to Charlie too. So what I did was I had my mom take pictures of me and those pictures are still around. I have them. Um, and I think I posted them on my Twitter once, but she took pictures of me. Uh, and then she drew, uh, she like did some like drawings with pencil that I scanned in and colored. Uh, and that was actually after we had gone to a David Hockney exhibit. And so I kind of chose colors based on what I'd seen there. Um, and, uh, I did do the last panel myself, uh, because it's supposed to take place, you know, in the universe of the comic, but, it's like this really beautiful, I'm so happy with how it turned out. It's just this beautiful spread, mostly like a huge splash panel of Mm -hmm. um, these drawings of Charlie, my mother and me collaborated on. I I honestly, like it, it took my breath away. The the combination of the two panels. Yeah. I I thought it was stunning. And I think you were right in that you want to keep going with it because I think it's really special. Thank you. (laughs) Did your thought fly back? <laughs> no, but it's okay. It probably was really unimportant. It's it's fine. <laughs> if it comes back to you, it's yours. Okay, yes. That's how we know that it was a good thought after all, if it returns to me. Yeah. I'm not counting on it. It's it's not a, it's not a thing. I got to say though, I really loved um just uh to go back to this this last little arc that just finished in the club. I Yeah. I absolutely love uh in the in the fourth panel Soren's little face that he, he's making it as oh. as uh as Mason, Mason is hugging is on rushing him. Rushing in to hug him. Yeah, it's, it's uh yeah, really in, cute. In that, on that page, uh they they uh they got kicked out. Mason and Shep got kicked out of Charlie's show. Um because they were like, you know, bugging him and they were really drunk. Like they were shouting at him to play free bird. <laughs> um, and so they get kicked out, but they wait for him outside. And um, Soren offers to drive them home uh, from the club. And Mason just goes like, I love you. I love all of you. Um, and he, he goes in to hug Soren and his face in the fourth panel. Soren's face is just like, okay. <laughs> it's a very like... Um, it's very like Saitama, yeah. Saitama in um, I agree. One Punch Man. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. um, Because I just thought, uh, I don't like watch or read One Punch Man, but I love how like, that face is very much like that effect <laughs> where it can mean anything based on what you attribute to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very so useful face. I, I, I want to use that, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's it's usually mildly disconcerted in some way, but like <laughs> yeah, it's a, very like perturbed, but kind of apathetic at the same time, which is very much like Soren's uh, <laughs> uh, permanent state yeah, and sort of fans, fans of there. Yeah. <laughs> fans of Soren will be happy to know that they're also going to be in um, the next chapter, hey. and they're going to be a pretty big part of it. Um, Oh yeah, and just for anyone listening, um, Soren uses he or they pronouns, uh, and I alternate between them in transcripts. Okay, so I, I guess yeah, I, I do. I'm curious that in that case, like, um, do you um, do you like worry about people sort of being on the uptake with that? Uh, what do you mean, well, like like getting that that's what Soren's pronoun? Yeah. Yeah, because I haven't really, um, you, you can't really know that without reading the transcripts or me talking about yeah. it. 
Um, so eventually I'm going to try to work out a way to make that like a deal, uh, like to have them talking about it. (laughs) It is especially because, especially because I started from a place where the characters already know each other and know everything about each other. So exposition is like impossible between the three of them. Without being So actually the arc I'm, yeah, the arc I'm doing is, uh, two of the, uh, the non-main cast, two secondary characters are asking them about something. Uh, and that's, that's how I get the exposition. Except they end up, they end up answering the wrong exposition question. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's part of the, the central conceit, the joke of it. Um, it's going to be the longest chapter ever. I already have six pages and we're not even halfway through oh, it. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna last for months. You guys are gonna hate it when it's done. That'll be in May and June. You know, it, the, uh, but the next the thrilling conclusion will be a birthday gift for me then. <laughs> oh, oh, congrats! It'll be a half birthday gift for me probably. <laughs> um, but uh, the the next chapter that I'm gonna do is about seven pages, which is the longest so far, and it's. It's like maybe the least momentous too. Uh, it's a very small story. I know that's actually a good thing because I want to tell the smallest stories possible. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's nice. I just, I, it's you know more yeah. and more I'm appreciating stories that are about mundane things that are just comfy. Yeah. You know, I like I want to be comfy. The world is scary and stressful, and I just I need something. That's exactly where I am with it. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to be controversial. I'm not trying to do anything, like, that new. All I'm trying to do is just make something that's silly and fun and very clearly from a place of love. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I don't I don't know how well I've done, but I'm pretty happy with how, how it's going right now. Good. What do you, I mean, what do you see, like, this is a big and maybe irritating question. What do you see for, like, the future of Miriam Beach? Like, oh, no, we got a phone ringing. Oh, is that- it's Sony calling in. I'm listening. <laughs> um, that must have been Alex. So I'm also, I'm also very into Fraser right uh. now. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. Oh, and actually, I said something about Fraser on, on Twitter that I think also applies to Miriam Beach. Do you remember that, oh, Ashley? God. Uh, I was talking about how the characters laugh at each yes! other's jokes on Fraser. Yes, I love that. And I was talking about, like, diegesis and how the jokes are clearly, like, in-universe. Yeah, that's... Which I think it's, it's less cynical and it takes the edge off, like, a mean joke knowing that it's not just for the audience. Like, the characters get it, and they they feel, you know, it just makes me feel better about laughing at the joke because they're it, laughing, It drives too. me up the wall, all of these sitcoms that don't re- yeah. understand that they're, are, they're actually having conversations. Like, like have you seen yeah. that where they took the laugh like, track out of Big Bang Theory? Yes, it's very clear that they're not telling jokes to each other, and that makes me feel like the characters hate each other. It really seems that way. That can be, it can be grueling to watch. It's nicer when, even if they are making fun of one another, you can tell yeah. <laughs> that that's not just for us. Yeah, that it's, it's uh, playful I living. Know. It's, it's yeah. between friends. And that's why, I mean, that's why Mabim Bam appeals to me. Because, you know, it's an example of, it's not a fictional work, but I love how they laugh at their own jokes. And I'm a big fan of corpsing and, like, uh, sitcoms and, and improv. Uh, it's just nice to know they're having fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, recently I've but, gotten really into um, Hello from the Magic Tavern. Uh, and oh, yeah? It's a good time. It's a really good time. And, yeah, I mean, it's just some people who like each other having fun together. And that's... That's that's all I'm trying to do with Miriam. <laughs> nice. Like, that's it. Um, so to answer your question about where I see it going, I genuinely don't know. And like I said, I have that concern about when I enter the adult world and get like a job, um, that I won't be able to work on it the way that I usually do and the way that makes me most productive. So I worry about having to put it on hiatus so soon. Um, but, uh, I mean, I really would love to take it maybe into different media too uh my very weird and lofty dream like i joked once that if gorillas and studio killers are virtual bands i want them to be virtual let's players (laughs) um oh my goodness that's genius yeah where i just you know i think a lot of the issue with 
uh, people liking the McElroys, it's tied up in these parasocial relationships, which is a relationship where you feel like you're friends with somebody, but they don't know you exist. Yeah, real like, humans with like that... Yeah, with like a sports player or like, but I want to introduce a space where you can have parasocial relationships, but it's okay because it's not like a real person. Um, That's a cool idea. Yeah, because it, it can feel really nice to have, you know, someone from afar that you're like rooting on that you feel like you have a friend relationship with them, but it's awful being a human and being on the receiving end of it because then you get people who think they can just make fun of you and it'll be okay because you're yeah, friends. Or, I mean, it can even and really you have never met them. Some folks go beyond that. Yeah, and it can it can get okay. yeah, it can get unhealthy where like people ship you with real people uh, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, or you know, show up at your so, house like that happened recently with those YouTubers. Yeah. Oh Jesus! Yeah, see, I just want like a safe, safe YouTuber. Yeah, because they're not real humans, uh, so you can't like be yeah. a predator. You can't. Yeah. They they're not real. Yeah, and I mean, people are still gonna draw porn of them, and I don't know how I feel about that. But uh, hasn't happened yet that I know of. Um, well, I'll just give it yeah. a minute. Uh, but yeah, no, I I want both you know, a, a safe kind of abstracted person where they're, they are already abstracted. You don't have to like, uh, kind of dehumanize a real person, but like training wheels, yeah. I guess, <laughs> to teach you how to treat people. Correct. Um, but I also just want like people to feel like they're friends with these characters mm -hmm. because I think a lot of it is a lot of the, uh, jokes are like based on their friendship and how well they know each other and I want people in on that too like I want it to be an inside I want all the jokes to be like inside jokes that we are also let in on as viewers recently um, I, I recall you mentioning something about doing some like little mini comics in sort of a B mail style was that yeah my, my B mails yeah. um I don't know if I'll still be doing that but I was thinking of doing that like just have them answer questions uh, just really quick ones where I could just bang out like a quick rough drawing because I could use another week on my buffer. But I don't know if I'm going to do that have yet. Have you? I might do that have you ever, during graduation. Have you ever read uh, Tracy Butler's Lackadaisy? No. Uh, but that's this, the one that the really nicely penciled cats, right? Yes. It's a beautiful, fun story about um, like Prohibition era bootleggers. Um, and they yes. just happen to to be cats it's really cute it's really really beautiful but um she does that on occasion she'll do like little one-off comics of like reader questions and they're always yeah. delightful i think that's a wonderful thing to do yeah i could do that um i'd have to change all my schedules but that's not a big deal uh yeah and so that's part of it because like i would love them I, I have mixed feelings about it being more interactive because, uh, as you can tell, I'm really scared of disappointing people and of talking to people. Um, I worry that I made myself too accessible to fans, uh, which is a pro has been a problem for the McElroys. Uh, yeah, I, I worry sure. that I'm, I'm fostering that parasocial relationship, and that's why I've shied away from interactivity. And can I tell you my very, very weird goal for Miriam Beach? I would like nothing Someday, better. <laughs> Someday I'd love to do, like, um, to have people actually act as them and, like, play games and do vlogs as them, where <laughs> I could have, yeah, I could have voice actors, um, you know, acting as them. I actually have assigned them voice actors, uh, <laughs> where I imagine, I imagine, like, Phil Lamar or Jordan Peele as Shep. Yeah, and yeah. Mason is, Mason is, I mean, he just, he looks and I think he acts like Travis McElroy. And I even imagine him having kind of a lisp like Travis, mm -hmm. but I could also see him as like Adam Conover or even Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Travis is kind of at the intersection of Jim Gaffigan and Adam <laughs> Conover. <laughs> um, but I, I like imagine people acting as them and like maybe mo capping. Uh, because I think that would just be fun is to have them like is to actually have people improv it because what I'm doing isn't improv but I I desperately want it to be so I really want people to actually like I want actors to like actively make their own you know scripts and jokes sure yeah gosh that's but fun that's, that's 
a very weird goal for it, and I don't think that'll happen. But it would be amazing, you know. For that to happen. Stranger things have happened. I think. I think, especially with the way that like media is and is becoming, just crossing mm. blurring lines between mediums and just like doing all kinds of weird stuff with your stuff. Like that's just yeah. more and more prevalent. Yeah. I mean, I'm a long way off from being able to do anything like that. And it's also very hard to cast because, um, you know, I, I, I have like a, a lot of disparate groups. Um, I don't know where I would find someone with like the exact same sense of humor and the right voice. Uh, but yeah, it would be amazing. Yeah, finding finding people on your same sort of wavelength can be really, yeah. <laughs> really challenging. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's my very weird vision for it. Well, lovely. Uh, but that's not, I mean, ideally, I would just keep making the comic and maybe be able to monetize it a little bit more, because I'm really trying to be a self advocate. Um, and, you know, try to try to turn my art into a career. Um, I don't know how feasible that is right now. But I uh, I don't know. Things are looking up for me, I think. Yeah, definitely. I uh, mm-hmm. Are you another person? I'm, I'm curious if you're familiar with, um, like, the comics The Meek and uh, Mari and Ternum. That is no to both. I See, the problem is, like, I don't read other <laughs> webcomics. I have personal reasons for mm-hmm. not being a part of the broader webcomics community, uh, mostly because I'm afraid of running into ex-friends and stuff um, like that. But... Uh, yeah, well, yeah, the reason I ask but, is because um, Dershing yeah. Helmer, the uh, woman who uh, does both of those comics, um, she's, you know, been trying to make these this, you know, happen in like a long term, like a uh, full time job way for years and years. And finally, yeah. she's like, just decided like this is, you know, I'm putting my eggs in this basket. And she did a, a Kickstarter to fund a mm. um, graphic novel version of Mari Internum. And she, at this point, mm. the Kickstarter is still not over, and she has raised four hundred percent of her goal. So, Holy Moses, just, like crying tears of gratitude right now, and it's beautiful to yeah. see, like the way that people have come out yeah. and just said, like, I like this thing that you make, and I want to pay money for it so you can do it. And <laughs> yeah, well, I'm I'm definitely going to be doing merch at the very least. Um, I, I'm always taking commissions and I usually have a pretty quick turnaround time. That's just a, a little plug. Yeah. Um, and, but, and you've got a uh, yeah. that people should get on. Yeah. I unfortunately, I haven't been like posting a lot of bonus material, but I'll try to get better <laughs> at that. Uh, my Patreon is Druzy, D R O O S Y. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty far away from being able to like kickstart like something like that but that is the point where i hope to get to and anyway like i was saying like i i'm not part of the web comics community um but because like all my influence like people always ask like uh what web comics you know do you look to for influence i'm like what's a web (laughs) comic because you know this is just bob's burgers and fraser and stuff like that um because I draw influence. It is, it's very much, it shouldn't be a comic is what I'm thinking <laughs> because it's incredibly not conducive to like everything I'm trying to do, which is just make it, you know, improv, improvised. And just a comic is probably the worst medium for yeah. it. But I'm doing it well, anyway. I mean, sometimes you just got to work with what you have, what you can do. Yeah. For sure. Well, I'm going to try to get Alex to come back. Apparently, his grandpa okay. um, is making lunch, and it's noisy. <laughs> so that's where he's going. I love it. Um, but I feel like we're at a point where we want to wrap up, so we'll definitely need Alex yeah. up in here. Hi. Is that Alex returning? Hi. Yeah. Welcome back. Hi, Alex. I missed you, I missed I missed you. you as well. I, I was like, you. I tried to cover for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I just didn't want to, like... <laughs> ruin anything important with background noise <laughs> no okay again like nothing nothing i say is important and i can't stress that enough. i think it is and that's no, why it's, that's why I was it's by like design that having a lot of, nothing i is was important. having a lot of fun a lot of fun listening i think your passion is important and yeah i definitely sense the passion there yeah 
but all that passion is like funneled into making it something unimportant, which is actually, I think the unimportance is not a bad oh, thing about no. it. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Ashley said, like Ashley said, sometimes you just yes. need a break. And yeah, that's what I'm yeah. hoping to be. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. Well, okay. Once again, let's, let's just plug all of your things so that we can okay. tell everyone about you. Uh, MiriamBeachComic.com, all one word. Miriam is spelled like the name. Um, and I'm Brent Raptor, again, all one word on Twitter. I am Druzy on Tumblr and Patreon, spelled D-R-O-O-S-Y. Um, let's see, I have a Kofi. Yeah, you and that's got also that. Brent, Yeah, that's also Brent Raptor. So uh, I think that's all I got for now. Um, I also, my online portfolio is rachelkellner.tumblr.com. K-A-L-N-E-R. Um, and that's one word again. That's mostly just for like employment purposes, but if you want to peep that, that's also cool. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for coming back. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You know, it's, it's, it's wild that like that you even wanted me to talk about my comic. Oh but, man, I wanted you to yeah. talk about your comic since it was first being a thing. Like I love it, wow. and I've been following it. You know, since it was just like a little twinkle in your eye. Like it's. I wonderful. know. I know. Yeah, everyone who followed me on Tumblr got to see his, like, entire genesis, <laughs> which I have mixed feelings about because I don't want anyone to feel, like, ownership over it. Oh, yeah. But I well, don't know. I'd That's say it's, a conversation for another time. It's a, it's a privilege to have been able to see your process. Well, thank you. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us, and like the video if you kind of just like us. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Anchor.fm, and elsewhere. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album, Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no, no guilty, guilty pleasures. pleasures. <laughs>